And I used to come here and bring a man called Oscar Woods, who was a legendary Suffolk uh, single row melodeon player from Saxmundham. But the great thing about Oscar was his wife was a bit posh and didn't really like Oscar going out with ruffians like me to pubs for sessions <laughs> like this. So Oscar, I used to have to pick him up at his house in Saxmundham and he used to have to tiptoe out the back door with his melodeon in one hand and his boots in the other. And his stocking feet. And we used to tiptoe into the car and he'd put his boots on and get in the car and I'd bring him to the Blacksell ship. So it's in his memory that I tell you this story. It's a story about a melodeon player, but I can only tell the story if I happen to have near me a very fine melodeon player. Hey. A very fine melodeon player, if a little vain. <laughs> a melodeon player not unknown in the music pubs of East Suffolk. Pubs like the Blacksell Ship, the Buckley Oyster, and the Tunstall Green Man. A very fine melodeon player, a popular man, because if folks fancied a little polka around the bar, as they often did in those days, and I'm expecting Terry Davy to grab my wife over there and show you exactly how that used to go, <laughs> then he could play them a polka. <laughs> That was your opportunity to dance and you missed it. <laughs> and a little later on, when people had drink taken, if they thought they could dance a jig, now it's a very funny thing, you know, but when people have drink taken, they always <laughs> think they can dance a jig. <laughs> then he could play them a jig. <laughs> And a little bit later on, uh, towards leaving time, if they found this something a little bit more smoochy, <laughs> he could even turn in an old time waltz. <laughs> Altogether a popular uh, musician in pubs such as this one. But there was one group of people he wasn't so popular with, because East Suffolk, along with Dartmoor and the west coast of Ireland, is one of the places where, if you're lucky, you can find the tradition of step dancing, hard shoe tap dancing. And the step dancers, they like to dance to dotted hornpipes. And our hero, no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't get his fingers round the dotted hornpipes. Go on. some bruised ankles and broken toenails and the blacks of shit when he tried to play them a step dance tune. So consequently, whenever he walked into a pub, all of the couple dancers would cheer. Hey! All of the step dancers would groan. Oh. That's right, there's a few step dancers in. <laughs> and it almost got so bad that he stopped going to the pub. Oh. But it never got quite that bad. <laughs> One day, he was on his way to the Blacksell ship with his melodeon under his arm, and he just came to that crossroads on the edge of the village. The crossroads that says Tunstall in one direction, uh, Snape in the other direction, and Blacksell in the other direction. It's a very strange crossroads, really. And there, leaning on the signpost, was this strange figure with two little horns on the top of his head, and a bit of a tail sticking out of the back of his trousers. Well, our hero thought, He's not a local. <laughs> and old Nick, old Scratch, the devil himself, that's who it was. He stepped forward, he said to the melodeon player, Ha! He said, you're the melodeon player who can't play the step dance tunes, aren't you? And our hero admitted that he was. Right, says Nick, sign me contract, and when you get to the ship tonight, you'll be able to play the step dance tunes as long and as fast as you like. So being a vain creature, and without reading the small print, he went down his biro and he signed the devil's contract. You know you should always read the small print. Our hero sat next to the bar, because Melodian players normally sit next to the bar, because that's where the free drinks are coming from. <laughs> so I know this Melodian player's got to drive later on. That's why we're not handing him. Our hero drank that pint of beer down in one. To mime it. <laughs> A few minutes later, a voice from the end of the bar called for a little dance tune. So he thought he'd open his account with a little Suffolk polka. Oh, Joe, the boat's going over. And I do expect you all, some of you at least, 
to dance. Now it could have been Jeffrey Ling and it could have been Kenza Diaper, both step dancers who dance many a time in this very bar. One of them called for a step dance tune and our hero thought nothing ventured, nothing gained. And he ripped into a step dance tune as though the very hands of hell were yapping at his heels. And they were up to that for the and that's saying something I can tell you. A little bit after midnight, Jim the landlord, never the one to break up a good session, announced that he was tired and he was going to bed, but he would leave the till open so folks could serve themselves. Because it used to be like that in the Blackstall ship in the old days. Well, eventually the couple dancers, they drifted off home, and the step dancers, they drifted off home. So all that was left was our hero sitting in the corner of the bar completely forgetting his meeting at the crossroads and still ripping out the step dance tune for all he was worth. <laughs> sitting, there was a scorch mark. <laughs> and in the middle of that scorch mark, a charred, screwed up piece of paper. And next to that piece of paper, a brand spanking new jukebox. <laughs> now that jukebox, it can play country and western, it can play punk, it can play rock and roll, but it's never ever been known to play a step dance tune. And that is why to this day, if you go to any pub in Suffolk, you're far more likely to find a jukebox than you are a melodium player. <laughs> and that's how the devil's music came to Suffolk. Oh. <laughs> 